Check that body. Get, get, get down. Hello again, welcome to EDSR Pro with me, Mike Smith. Uh, just going to have a look now at uh, mastering just with Cubase plugins uh, using stems within Cubase. Uh, this is kind of on the fly, it's not necessarily the right way to do things. Again, I'm not really used to using all of Cubase's uh, plugins, so it'll just be a little bit of trial and error. So let's get started. Um, here's my stems. I've basically got a drum stem, bass stem, vocals, uh, acid line and uh, effects and piano. So just a project I've been working on lately. So there you go, you get the idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to put uh, some inserts on the master chain. I'm not going to go into the individual channels and tweak those. Um, I just want to make this sound uh, a bit brighter, a bit louder, a bit more polished, uh, a bit more of a finished project. So. Let me just minimize my mixer and bring it across. So, first of all, I think what we'll do is we'll put a compressor on the master output. And for this, I'm just going to use, like I said, all of uh, Cubase's plugins. Um, so, we'll just start with a, a standard compressor. Now, with this, all I'm going to do is glue um, the sounds together. So, there's going to be very little compression. So we'll maybe put it down to about one and a half, put quite a long attack on it. Um, we'll leave the release, take hold off and bring it on to peak. And we'll just sort of bring the threshold down a little bit. What I'll do is I'll take auto gain off as well, make up. Because what I'm going to do is I'm not going to um, start boosting the signal as of yet. Um, we'll, we'll do that in a second. So. As you can see on my master fader, I've got plenty of headroom. And what I'm doing here, you can see there now there's one and a half, 1.6 dB of gain reduction. Um, let me just bypass it. And there you go, that's all we want. You can hear there there's no makeup gain from the compressor as well. I just want it to just sort of just any any peaks, any massive transients, just to sort of bring down and gel everything. So again, we're not trying to compress the hell out of it. That's why we've put a tiny little ratio on it, uh, a long attack and a long release. It's a good idea to always A and B stuff there, turning it on and off as well, so you can hear exactly what the effect's doing and whether it's having a positive or negative effect on your sound. As you can hear there, there's, there's not a massive difference at all, um, but you can see we've just got a little bit of gain reduction. So next, um, let's put a multiband compressor. Uh, dynamics, multiband. Not in that's in the normal one, isn't it? I think. Uh, multiband compressor. There you go. Now with this one, we're going to be a little bit more um, sculpting, if you like, with the sound. So let's start with the bottom end. In fact, let's go for a preset. Let's. Uh, Solid master sounds nice. Actually sounds nicer than dance master, so we'll we'll stick with ballad master. Now, yes, I'm using a preset. Um, you know, it's kind of a cheat's way out if you like, but what we're gonna do now is go in. It's it's kind of done a lot of the work for us, uh, but what we'll do is just go and sort of fine-tune it to our track. So we'll start soloing the bands and going through. So now this first band, I want it to be um, like all the real bottom end. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit. There you go. Now you can see there, there's no gain reduction on, on that either. So we'll just bring this down a little bit. Till we start seeing something. There we go. So 
so that's we'll leave that as is and what we can do is maybe just raise that back up by about the same let's solo our next band now again I want this to be um, sort of the main main bottom end if you like so let me do that about there again let's bring the threshold down a little bit so it's, we're getting a bit of something we'll just be really gentle you know a couple of dbs at the most and let's just have a little listen to that let's go on to the next section Maybe a bit high, will maybe. Well, let's have a listen to that first. Yeah. We'll go about there. Again, you can just see it's tickling it a little bit. Quite low uh, compression ratios. Have a listen for a second. What we're going to do is bypass it. You can see there, there's a little bit of uh, gain. So let's let's just bring it down so we can match it first, so we can hear what the compressor's doing. you can hear there straight away it's taken control of the bottom end the bottom end isn't as boomy it's a lot tighter a little bit more compressed and punchy so it's got rid of that boominess and muddiness and we've brightened up the highs a little bit so definitely positive let's maybe boost boost this a little bit So that's nice, that, that's made a, a definite positive effect on our track. So now let's go in uh, to the channel and we'll click on the EQ. And basically, I've already got a low cut on there. So 29 hertz, let's, let's get that to about, let's do a 30 hertz. And all that's doing really is just cutting out all the real sub frequencies. You don't really hear them, um, you do feel them. Um, there's not many club sound systems actually go down to that sort of level. So all we've done is just rolled a little bit of bottom end off. Again, just to maybe get rid of a little bit of boominess. It's not apparent, but uh, it helps. So and you can see here, we might need it sort of a little boost around this section, just to bring up levels a little bit. So first of all, what I'm going to do with this is turn this channel on. I'm going to do quite a big boost. I'm going to do it as parametric, bring the cue in, and I'm just going to have a little sweep through the frequencies and see, see what we can find if there's anything there. Maybe that, which is about right, 250 hertz, you tend to get a real hollow, hollow sort of sound. So we'll just drop that back off there. Look, maybe about three, three, four dB, three and a half, I'll do. Maybe open up the cue just a little bit. Again, you just get a bit of separation between the bass as well, the bottom end and, and the rest. So. Let's go in, let's turn this on, high frequency shelf. I 
I mean, I might be going to extremes here. You don't necessarily want to start boosting loads and loads. 3DB, to be honest, in the mastering stage is possibly too much, but you know, all we're doing is just trying to brighten this mix up for now. So it's not like I said, this is not the exact way to do it. It's not the exact science. I'm just sort of uh, going through some processes. So again, let's turn three on. Let's get a little boost. Bringing out that piano about there. See, that's kind of nice. Brightened it up a little bit. You know, which is what we're kind of after. Again, I may be in it by turning it on and off, so you can see what's going on. having a positive effect so that that's good and then the final stage really you know would be we could maybe try a bit of back magneto on it a bit of uh, soft saturation let's see what we'll get a bit of tape saturation let's maybe try a little bit of that adding some nice little qualities to it again I've only just put a tiny little bit of drive on I'm not going to boost the gain that's quite nice and then a brick wall limiter Now for me the limiter just wants to be tickling again you don't want to be completely squashing the hell out of the dynamics with a limiter we just want it to tickle so any of the like i said the big transients are probably just pushed down a little bit and kept in control uh, again with this being an old school track as well they didn't use massive amounts of compression and stuff like that so Turn up the uh, release a little bit so it's not quite as apparent. But there you can see it's just tickling. Tiny little bit of gain reduction. I think that's about it so let's let's turn everything off so that was our starting point and straight away as you can hear the mix was actually really really dull and so let's turn them on one by one a little bit of glue compression then we've got multiband compression bit of EQ And finally, a little bit of tip saturation. Maybe actually bring that EQ down a little bit now. Things you can do as well, obviously, um, if you're using different EQs and so on, you can move them around. Um, because doing it in this order, a lot of people don't like to put EQs before compression and say you must only put an EQ after a compression, especially if you're boosting signals. But sometimes it's maybe nicer actually boosting it into the compressor so the compressor works a little bit more. So again, fortunately now you can just drag and drop and change the direction of... This is 
obviously you can see there it's clipping so we maybe just need to wind that back down a little bit So there you go, that's it really. Uh, just a quick tutorial, maybe showing you how to do a bit of mastering within Cubase and using Cubase plugins. Like I've said, I actually don't use Cubase plugins enough um, just because I've got other ones that I've gone to for years. But to be honest, the quality of the plugins now are so much better, certainly with the, the saturation, um, the EQs, the compressor, the multiband compressor is amazing. So yeah, um, a lot of really, really good stuff in Cubase now that's very usable. So yeah, don't forget, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, I hope you found, found this useful. Bye-bye. Check that body.